сюда. Кристина, фотка.
пока, люди. Мы на смотри, мама. Вот снимаю. О, Сейчас подожди, сиди на Be the Little Ituri Forest. Ituri is Swahili for little, so we can also say that this is the Little Little Forest. Now we're going to take it very slowly, or as we say in Rome, poly poly. And these animals tend to rely on their natural markings and camouflage, so we want to keep our eyes peeled. Ooh, first off, we are seeing some okapi on the right, those striped legged creatures there. Okapis are one of the most shy, reclusive animals. They actually weren't even discovered by the Western world until 1901. And those stripes yeah. are kind of deceiving. Looks like they would be a relative to the zebra, but they are in fact the only known relative to the giraffe. There's also an animal all by itself laying against the fencing there. It has a yellow back, that little yellow spot on its back. That is a yellow-backed diker. Diker in Afrikaans means diver. When that animal becomes afraid, it raises that yellow dorsal crest, which emits a piercing whistling sound, and it goes diving deep into the forest. But as some people are noticing, there is a greater kudu on the left. Ooh, there's actually a better view of one right down here. Greater kudu, or the second tallest antelope. They can weigh up to 750 pounds. Also, I know that those are female because females do not have horns, and males too. Whoa, whoa. Looks like we got another greater kudu here on the left. We only have females on the razor. Now we are approaching a watering hole. These are normally pretty interesting. Sometimes we can see a pretty rare species. And I'm referring to the black rhino. So keep your eyes peeled on the left side. We might see it. Out on the right, we are seeing a baobab tree. That's also known as the upside down tree because it looks like those roots are hanging out there on the top. Those trees are actually full of water. And due to their slow metabolisms, they can actually live for thousands of years. Of the whole reserve. We are now in the savannah. And what's so neat about the savannah in general is all the animals that live here, they are helping to construct this atmosphere and landscape that we're seeing. It's a completely balanced ecosystem. None of these animals are going hungry. And we are working so hard at the reserve to maintain this natural lifestyle for these animals. We want it to be as much like the wild as possible. It looks like we're already going to be seeing one of the divas of the reserve. And that is the giraffe. We're going to be seeing some white bearded wildebeest over on the right, kind of in that grass area there, kind of hard to see. We might get a better view when we curve around. Also, there are some really tiny ones too. Those are springbok that we're seeing around here. And they're given the name springbok because they can actually spring up to 11 and a half feet in the air. Yeah, we'll be getting a better view of those white bearded wildebeest too while we curve around. But Africans gave wildebeest that name because of their seemingly menacing appearance. It's the Afrikaans name for wild beast. Also, they have one of the largest annual migrations, so it makes markings their on their faces, which is what makes them the brightest. Way far back there, you gotta see an elephant. Oh, no, I guess I missed. Oh man. Oh good, I'm seeing clay. That is such a distance. I'm hoping we can get a good view. Sometimes you can get the radio station in here, though. I'm gonna check it out. Oh cool, it's coming through. 
Yeah, if you see those beautiful tusks there, unfortunately, hunters and poachers, they are yeah, sure. hunting them for those ivory tusks. What the mama's about to do? Oh, so there's a reticulated giraffe on the right. What the field? But if you notice, it looks like that that's dirty over there on the left. They like to put mud, dirt, grass, different well, things on their back like, because... It's a tiger, tiger, me. And shooters are super like neat because of these the... Kobe's. Let's check it out here. We have some scimitar horned orcs here. And they're given that name because their horns look like the scimitar sword that's used in the Middle East. Over here we are seeing some warthogs and these holes here on the left, these are warthog burrows. Warthogs like to hang out on these burrows here. Ooh, looks like an ostrich. Now ostriches they are famous for these weird squirrely long horns. Now those can get up to five feet long, as well as a naked bull rat. Also, Rafiki's Planet, which is a fun place to go. You can hop on that train and head over there.
Stay on board long enough. The golden age of steam. And just like me, they make it the old fashioned. Cuide a los pequeños. Gracias. As we head into the American wilderness, we'll pass by the dusty desert town of Tumbleweed. And keep your eyes peeled for the runaway mine trains of Big Thunder Mountain Railroad. The runaway trains. Now I ask, is that any way to run a railroad? Fairies and forests of the American wilderness. These boys have to Philippe says, Yay! 
And now, Mrs. Potts and dear little Chip, the teacher, they hop everywhere. Can you hop, Graham? Good one. And finally, it's time to decide who gets to portray me. Oh, you've got some awfully big drawers to fill. Okay, give me a great big oh.
Gracias.